Why are women so much more interesting to men than men are to women? Perhaps it was this question that drove Virginia to the many relationships she had in her lifetime. A beauty with a brain, it was rare to find Virginia without a flock of admirers, both male and female. A persistent one amongst them was Leonard Wolf. During their six-month courtship, Leonard proposed numerous times, but Virginia was fearful of marriage and the emotional and sexual involvement it required. She resisted. As I told you brutally the other day, I feel no physical attraction to you. There are moments when you kissed me, the other day was one, when I feel no more than a rock. And yet, your caring for me, as you do, almost overwhelms me. It is so real and so strange. Eventually, his persistence paid off. Virginia finally accepted, and after a two-year-long engagement, they were married. But marriage could not bind Virginia, and she continued to have dalliances with her many admirers. The most noted was her affair with writer and aristocrat, Vita Sackwell West. Vita fell for Virginia, and she fell fast. After her first meeting with Virginia, she wrote to her husband, I simply adore Virginia Woolf, and so would you. You would fall quite flat before her charm and personality. Mrs. Woolf is so simple, she does give the impression of something big. She is utterly unaffected. There are no outward adornments. She dresses quite atrociously. At first, you think she is plain. Then a sort of spiritual beauty imposes itself on you, and you find a fascination in watching her. She was smarter last night, that is to say. The woolen orange stockings were replaced by yellow silk ones. Ah, but she still wore the pumps. She is both detached and human, silent till she wants to say something, and then says it supremely well. I've rarely taken such a fancy to anyone, and I think she likes me. At least she asked me to Richmond where she lives. Darling, I have quite lost my heart. Over the next few weeks, Vita had lost her heart completely. And the intimacy between the two women brought them closer and closer and closer. Vita often chose to share her thoughts in her diary. Dined with Virginia at Richmond. She's as delicious as ever. How right she is when she says that love makes anyone a bore. But the excitement of life lies in the little moves nearer to people. But perhaps she feels this because she is an experimentalist in humanity and has no great passion in her life. A month later, Vita confided in her diary again. Lunch with Virginia in Tavistock Square, where she has just arrived. The first time that I have been alone with her for long. Went on to see Mama. My head swimming with Virginia. A year after the start of their affair, Vita left the country to travel and wrote to Virginia. Please forgive me for writing such a miserable letter. I'm reduced to a thing that wants Virginia. I composed a beautiful letter to you in the sleepless nightmare hours of the night, and it has all gone. I just miss you in a quite simple, desperate human way. You, with all your undone letters, would never write so elementary a phrase as that. Perhaps you wouldn't even feel it. And yet, I believe you will be sensible of a little gap. But you'd clothe it in so exquisite a phrase that it would lose a little of its reality. Whereas with me it is quite stark. I miss you even more than I could have believed. And I was prepared to miss you a good deal. So this letter is just really a squeal of pain. It is incredible how essential to me you have become. I suppose you are accustomed to people saying these things. Damn you. Spoiled creature. I shan't make you love me any the more by giving myself away like this. Oh, my dear. I can't be clever and standoffish with you. 
I love you too much for that. Too truly. You have no idea how standoffish I can be with people I don't. <sighs> love. I have brought it to a fine art. But you have broken down my defenses. And I don't really resent it. To which Virginia replied, Your letter came this morning. Why do you think I don't feel or that I make phrases? Lovely phrases? Mm -hmm. You say which rob things of reality. Just the opposite. Always, always, always. I try to say what I feel. Will you then believe that after you went last Tuesday, exactly a week ago, out I went into the slums of Bloomsbury to find a barrel organ. But it did not make me cheerful. And ever since, nothing important has happened. Somehow, it's dull and damp. I have been dull. I have missed you. I do miss you. I shall miss you. And if you don't believe it, you're a long-eared owl and ass. Lovely phrases. But of course, to return to your letter, I always knew about your standoffishness. Only I said to myself, I insist upon kindness. With this aim in view, I came to Long Barn. Open the top button of your jersey and you will see, nestling inside, a lively squirrel with the most inquisitive habits, but a dear creature all the same. Their letters were often strained, sad, and even desperate. Look here, Vita. Throw over your man and we'll go to Hampton Court and dine on the river together and walk in the garden in the moonlight and come home late and have a bottle of wine and get tipsy. And I'll tell you all the things I have in my head. Millions, myriads. They won't stir by day, only by dark on the river. Think of that. Throw over your man, I say, and come. Theirs was not an affair that ended in tragedy but simply in a cooling of passions into a beautiful, lasting friendship. And Vita continued to visit Virginia. Vita had her own room in the wolf house. Virginia would keep the room tidy and filled with flowers in anticipation of Vita's visit. But the outbreak of the Second World War made it impossible for Vita to come. In what would be the last letter to her, lo to her lover and friend, Virginia wrote, I've just stopped talking to you. It seems so strange. It's perfectly peaceful here. They're playing bowls. I just put flowers in your room. And there you sit with the bombs falling around you. What can one say except that I love you? And I've got to live through this strange, quiet evening thinking of you sitting alone. Dearest, let me have a line. You have given me such happiness. Virginia's husband, Leonard, knew about the relationship and did not object. Throughout their long marriage, Leonard nursed Virginia through multiple bouts of depression, numerous suicide attempts, and the ups and downs of her bipolar disorder. But on 28th March 1941, Virginia decided to end it all. She filled her pockets with stones jumped into a river and drowned herself. In the end, the girl with multiple admirers wished to bid farewell to that one person who had never moved from her side, her husband, her trusted friend and lover. I feel certain I am going mad. I feel I can't go through another of those terrible times and I shan't recover this time. I begin to hear voices, and I can't concentrate. So I am doing what seems the best thing to do. You have given me the greatest possible happiness. You have been in every way all that anyone could be. I don't think two people could have been happier till this terrible disease came. I can't fight any longer. I know that I'm spoiling your life, that without me you could work. And you will, I know. You see, I, I can't even write this properly. I can't read. What I want to say is I owe all the happiness of my life to you. 
you have been entirely patient with me and incredibly good. I want to say that everybody knows it. If anybody could have saved me, it would have been you. Everything is gone from me, but the certainty of your goodness. I can't go on spoiling your life any longer. I don't think two people could have been happier than we have been. Virginia. Thank you.